magic means different things to different people. While many of its players see it as just a game to play with their friends, some become obsessed with building more optimized decks. There are players who love older cards and only play with them, and there are folks who are just crazy about the color pie, and then there's people like me, the Vorthos, the fans who adore Magic's lore. And yes, I can reuse the same intro because it's my channel and I do what I want. Now, in my other video, I showcased some of my biggest gripes with Magic's story and the flaws it has. I talked about my problems with WotC as a company and the low expectations I have for their product. If you watched that video, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, that guy hates magic. I mean, come on, it's in the title. But the truth is, I don't. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I love magic and its story. I wouldn't be dedicating so much time and effort on a YouTube channel for something I didn't like. I just... Guys, I don't have that kind of energy. Yes, I do get upset whenever a new story releases, and it's even worse than what I was expecting, but that anger is fleeting and usually forgotten by the end of the day. Do I get upset with Magic's story? Yes, of course I do, but that never overrides my love for it. In this ramble, I wanted to take some time to relax and explain why I love Magic's story, despite its imperfections. And one of the biggest draws I have towards Magic's story is its possibility. There's a lot that could be said about the multiverse, but one of the big things it represents is diversity. And I'm talking I'm talking true diversity, not that woke bullshit Watsy tries to peddle. The planes of the multiverse are a pretty wild bunch, each one being a setting all of its own, but when they come together, they create a rather unique tapestry of possibility. Look at the difference between, I don't know, Lorwyn, for instance, and Tarkir. One is a world of warring clans, and the other is a mystical fantasy world that periodically shifts into some crazy nightmare realm. These planes tug on the imagination like no other fantasy setting I know of, and it gives the players a huge wealth of settings to work with. I mean, if the high-tech gang life of New Capenna isn't your style, you can always head on over to Innistrad and enjoy that, for instance. One of the big gripes I said in the other video, I think, is uh, how a lot of the new planes are just uninspired theme parks. And that's still true, and I still dislike those worlds, but one of the cool things about a fantasy setting is the fact that a bad world doesn't necessarily have to stay bad forever. It's totally possible that we could return to Call Time, for instance, and find it much more fleshed out and unique in the future, and that small possibility does give me hope that it'll be improved. On those various planes, we see the next most interesting thing about Magic's lore, and that is the races. Just like the planes, Magic's races can be some of the most interesting and compelling in all of fantasy. And I mean, just look at Slivers and Aldrazi, some of the most popular creatures in the game, and they have loads of lore. It's, it's amazing. It's crazy to think about. Slivers are awesome. Aldrazi are crazy cool. And there's plenty of creatures out there. They don't have to have loads of lore to be cool. I mean, look at the Aetherborn, for instance, which I do genuinely want to see more of and learn more about. But there's also things like the Slith or Spikes, creatures we have very little to work with. I don't think Spikes have any lore. Just, uh, just like the planes, these creatures play with your imagination and leave you wanting more. I'm super curious about the Spikes, for instance. Where did they come from? Are they native to Wrath somehow? Or like the Slivers, were they brought there by Volrath for experimentation? I don't think we'll ever know, but I want to know, and that's, you know, that's what makes me excited for them, the fact that I, I'm left wanting more of them. Of course, another thing I absolutely love, even in the new sense, is flavor text. It's no secret that flavor text is basically my favorite part of the card, and whenever I stumble on a good one, it's a delight. And again, it's not just in the older sets. For example, I hate the idea of Infinity with a burning passion, and I hate the possibility that it could ruin Eternal formats with inserting these silly uncards, but whatever. Despite the fact that I hate Infinity, when I saw the flavor text of Fortune Teller, I burst out laughing. Um, I'm gonna pull it up here, pause. Today's fortune 
you will regret spending your money on this fortune. I mean, that's fucking funny. I'm probably going to own this card because of that flavor text, and it's not the only time I've done that. I really can't stress enough how much I favor flavor text. Ah, rhyme there. I mean, I put it in most of my videos for a reason, and I spend a lot of time perusing flavor text just for just the right one, you know? I, I, I feel like it's one of the most fascinating and interesting parts of a card. The way that, you know, beyond just the art, the flavor text of a card can tie into the lore, and I love that stuff. You know, focusing back on the actual lore for a minute, I mentioned the planes and the creatures, but following characters on their adventures is obviously a delight for me. For Planeswalkers, sometimes it can feel like a bit of a chore. We follow the same character over several years written by different authors, and that can be awful. One of my problems with Planeswalkers is that they rarely have a genuine stake in what's going on. They're usually just visiting a world during whatever crisis is going down, but it doesn't have to be that way. I genuinely enjoy when Planeswalkers have a smaller role and we're allowed to just enjoy the world building. You know, one of my favorite stories is the Lorwyn one. Following Reese's journey through Lorwyn and Shadowmoor, for instance, feels like such a great experience, in part because Reese himself is tied to what's going on. He won't just leave when the story is over. This elf is a part of this world, and so the story feels a bit more impactful. And that's not to say I dislike Planeswalkers. One of my favorite stories was the Khans of Tarkir block, which features Sarkhan Vol, that lizard lover as the main character, but even with him as the focus, we still got a great feel of the world itself and a fantastic story featuring the characters that lived there, so it was a very fulfilling experience. I know I often grumble and gripe about whenever a new story comes out and it's bad. Hell, I think I call Dominaria United an abomination. But the truth is, they really don't upset me all that much, and the reason is, Magis got something like 25 years of stories for me to go back to and read. Do you think I've read all the books? <laughs> no, no, I definitely have not. There's like, there's over 70-something books made throughout the course of Magic's history, of which I think I've read less than half hell. I don't even think I've read a full third. I've probably read maybe, I don't know, 20 at that? You know, then there's all the comics and the short stories that pop up on the mothership. Uh, if the new Brothers War story comes out and turns out to be the absolute dong shit disaster I think it will be, yeah, I'll be upset because, like, dude, what the fuck? You've been at this for 30 years. How can you not make a good story? But in reality, I'd only be upset for like a day or so, and I'll have completely forgotten about it by the end of the week. In the meantime, I'll be pouring through Dark Legacy or some other old book. Actually, I think my one friend said he had a copy of Colors of Magic somewhere. I hope I can borrow that at some point. It's not just the novels. I've... It's any of the books. I've, I've talked about the art books on this channel before, and god damn, I still love them. They are an amazing way to just flesh out worlds, and I really do hope we get more someday. Not the stupid Jay and Nelly ones, the actual, the thick art books. They were great. I think they're great. I don't think this video will be nearly as long as my other one, and if that's the case, it's probably because it's easier for me to express what pisses me off than it is for me to explain why I like something. I mean, if you pulled me aside right now and told me to explain why I enjoyed, I don't know, Children of the Nameless, I'd do a shit job at it. I don't know. The story's good. Davriel's a cool character. It didn't suck. 10 out of 10. But if you asked me to tell you why I hated Strixhaven, I'd probably have a laundry list of complaints. I, it's a really fucking trash story and it has absolutely nothing going on with it that's even possibly redeeming. They completely misuse most of the characters. All of the teachers are uninteresting and... Uh, mm, focus. I don't know why it is. It just is. When I'm satisfied with something, that satisfaction is all I need. But when I dislike something, I guess it, it's just easier to find flaws. This is why I keep saying I'm a bad critic. I I guess I'd do an awful job of explaining why something I love so passionately is good. Meanwhile, I'd probably go on at length on why something I'm never going to engage with again is awful dog shit. My point is, I do genuinely love Magic's story. I love the worlds and the characters on them. Some of my favorite stories of all time take place in Magic's lore. 
and I love it enough to dedicate a huge chunk of time, uh, huge parts of my week, hours upon hours, to a YouTube channel where I try to share this passion, this love, with all of you. Do I get angry and disappointed sometimes? Not even sometimes, a lot of the time. Yes, I, I do. I get very upset. I can't change that. It's just how I am. But I can reaffirm that even if I hate something, even if I'm angry with something, it's, it's totally possible to love it even more. I don't know what to say. Thanks for listening, and guys, I'll catch you in whatever, in whatever my next video is. Have a good day.